Welcome, it's Trudy Vysotsky here and I'm very happy to be sharing with you one of our first interviews that we're calling Expert Panel. So basically what we do is we know that as business owners in business development and personal development, we're always looking at ways that we can grow and improve. And I'm very happy in this very first interview to share with you one of my favourite people, probably the only person I ever go to for do, to do with digital marketing, uh, and um, that's Chrissy Simianakis. She, Chrissy Simianakis Begley, probably slash next to that, um, and she's the founder of Creative Little Soul. And um, as I said, you know, sometimes when you're growing a business, you you can put the hat on of so many different people. And the reality is, I think we've got to start learning to delegate a bit more, myself included, and actually outsource the skill set of people that know what they're doing. Now, I know what I'm doing, what I'm doing in my business. I'm very good at behavioral psychology, grant writing, community development, and so many other creative things. But I have to admit, I'm not the greatest at digital marketing. So therefore, when I need experts, I go to people like Chrissy. So Welcome, Chrissy, and um, I, I sort of I know about your background, but I'd really love for you to share um, why you you know you've got such a broad background in hospitality, tourism, and so many different upper areas. Um, what enticed you to get into digital marketing, and not only get into it, actually start your own company? Yeah, sure. Hi, Trudy. Thanks for having me. Um, so I always had a passion for writing, um, so I think that was my first love. So I always knew I wanted to be a writer. I studied journalism, public relations and marketing, uh, worked within the hospitality and entertainment industry. That was just, you know, two passions marrying up and, you know, used to still have to send press releases and faxes. Um, I remember when the internet uh, first came to our house and when it was dial-up. So, you know, we're talking about uh, the golden age of the internet. And I think I just always had a bit of a passion uh, for that technology and getting to, you know, learn more, um, probably was an early adopter in quite a few different platforms and systems and just really uh, loved social media being a social person. So, yeah, I was always the person that knew a little bit more, so was kind of thrust into, um, you know, that space and area. And then I, you know, worked for big hospitality groups, uh, hospitality industry, and yeah, looked after all the digital social marketing concepts and strategy. And then eight and a half years ago, I was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. So that diagnosis and that shakeup really just made me look at what it was I wanted to do. And I was working for somebody else, but it didn't really give me the freedom and flexibility to have a flexible workplace. So, you know, if I wasn't feeling well, yeah. um, I didn't want to commute. So... I was like, okay, you've kind of been doing the side hustle and you're that person that people come to when they need something done or they don't understand digital or social. And I thought, well, this is a fantastic opportunity to start my own business. But for me, it was really about helping people. And I could see that there were, as you said, there were a lot of people who uh, were time poor. They didn't have the skills or resources to be able to wear all of the hats. Uh, nor did they want to. So I created my agency, which was just a one-woman show. And yeah, fast forward uh, eight and a half years now. And I have, you know, more than 10 staff that work for me. We do everything from graphic design, copy content, um, but I, and social media. But I think my passion uh, is email marketing. And that's really been something that I'm kind of known yeah. for now. Yeah, absolutely. Because I know that I know that you love all aspects of it. That's what I was going to ask you. And thanks for sharing that, because I think that's a, a lot of people, particularly with uh, what's going on around the world at the moment, the online arena has become even more prevalent. Um, and myself, even writing online workshops, going from face to face to online, it's um, there are challenges that, with, that come with that. There's also exciting because there's so many different things that you can learn and do. But what is it about email marketing that you love the most? Yeah. Uh, so I actually shared this story the other day when I was talking to some people and when my first foray into that was when it was somebody's birthday, I'm sure a nightclub that I worked for, when it was somebody's birthday, we actually had to print off um, a list from our database um, or our Excel spreadsheet. Mm -hmm. And then we had to find all the people whose birthdays were for that month. And we actually wrote a handwritten birthday card, wow. popped a stamp on a letter and sent them out. And I was like, this is, and I would see how many return to senders would come back. 
And just the cost alone of, you know, a stamp, like, who knows, it was probably 40 cents now. The last time I bought a stamp, it was a dollar. So the technology has evolved and the way in which we do things had evolved. And I was like, why are we not sending this out? Like, we can email person to person, but why are we not doing this on a bulk level? So the club that I worked at were one of the very first few in Australia to actually roll out a customer loyalty program, um, which when gave us all of this customer spend and data. And I think just from there, I just continued to be really interested. And I'm a Virgo, so I'm really detail orientated. And I just love that we could get all of this personal information and then utilize it to communicate with people. Um, and just from there, I just, yeah, I love it. And I'm really engrossed in it. Oh, absolutely. And I guess that um, a lot of pre people probably don't know the difference between uh, a standard campaign or an automation campaign, which is what we're sort of talking about today. We, we could talk for hours on different topics, but today we're sort of going to try and zone in just on email automation. So, yeah. So well, what are the differences between that? Yeah, cool. So um, you've got your database and, you know, wherever you've got those customers and whatever information you have. And so... A standard, a standard EDM or an, an e-flyer or a newsletter are things that you send out. Um, maybe you've got the, you know, you've got a bit of a calendar and you know when you're going to send something out. But it's a communication that has um, messaging in there that kind of has a bit of a short shelf life. So, you know, it's Mother's Day. We want to send a burst out letting people know. So it's in the moment. Um, and we pull, we pull that trigger manually. Like we're going to hit send and it's going to go out. Automation is that we're taking the data and the information that we have, and then what we're doing is we're creating some timeless, um, you know, content or messaging that isn't going to expire. And then what we're doing is we're telling the database or the the mail client that you're using the rules of when we would like the system to send it out for us. So an example of that might be is, you know, somebody signs up on my website and they pop their details in. They go into my database and the first email that's triggered is a welcome email. And in that welcome email, and I'll paraphrase, it's, hey, hey, thanks, Trudy, for signing up. You know, really happy that you're here. You can expect to hear from us, you know, pretty regularly or once a month. You let them know the frequency. And then you're also saying, look, we're also on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, wherever else you would like them to follow you. So then you're encouraging that cross pollinization across platforms and then you always want to put a call to action in there also with all these free resources with all these other free resources or i've got a podcast go and check me out there so that's a really good um base campaign to have running uh another one that i love to send is when it's somebody's birthday yes. uh yeah and and i'm sure you know um if anyone has subscribed to like sephora or they've gone to Maya or Maybe they've eaten at the pancake place. Uh, if you've given them your birthday information, they want to say, hey, Trudy, happy birthday. We're thinking about you. And then you'll go, oh, you beauty, look at all these freebies I've got. And you may not have been there in some time, but when it's people's birthdays, people just get that little dopamine hit of, yeah, it's about me. And it's one of the most effective things you can do. And you know, you just put the rules in again. You're telling the system what you would like it to do. You create that communication. I usually suggest you put in a, a voucher. Um, it can be a barcode if you want to scan it to track right. redemption. It might be a discount code that people can apply to your shopping cart. Um, or, you know, it could just be simply the fact that you're just wishing somebody um, a happy birthday. So, yeah, incredibly um, well received. Yeah, I, I love that. And I know that people that are watching this probably have got lots of different examples that they uh, have had of their own. I mean, I'm always getting Pancake um, Factory 
vouchers, but I've become diabetic recently, so I've asked them to stop it. <laughs> but oh, the other day I also went to our local, um, you know, I guess football club, a place that we go to every week. And um, and when I went there the couple of days before my birthday, I swiped my card and it started singing happy birthday. Now, oh, wow. during COVID, I've become an introvert, so it was very uncomfortable. Otherwise, I would have been jumping for joy. But everyone started singing to me that, that so it was, but again, the dopamine rush. I mean, the fact is that whether we like it or not, you know, there is a deep part of us that actually enjoys um, being the centre yeah. of attention. So, and I guess another example from my experience is that, um, uh, about a year and a half ago, we set up um, some email automation after talking to you. And one of the um, one of the, the thing that I love is I love the fact that people support me, whether it's personally or business wise. So I'm very much about authentic support. And so one of our mm. emails was, you know, um, wow, we really appreciate your support. And I actually had uh, uh, about five people that week. That was the first time that that email had gone out, and it was legitimate. Because I'm all about authentic communication. I mean, that's my whole life has been sure. about um, being authentic. And so these people, uh, one lady actually messaged me on Messenger. She said, I really loved that email that came out. And I said, well, okay. you know, you do know it's automated, but it came from love. You know, it wasn't it wasn't something we weren't trying to sell you anything or offer you anything or just grab stuff. You know, again, I think that that's a big thing that happens a lot. A lot of marketing uh, people are, uh, you know, make, suggesting inauthentic communication. But what you're talking about is really just is sharing with people what you do and obviously if you're building that connection um some the interaction the um the uh, it, you know the interaction is going to happen anyway um so yeah. you know, naturally i always say i always say to everyone um whether it's on facebook instagram it's in your newsletter um uh, it's about it's a, it's your community um and i think very much people often forget and you shouldn't always be selling. And I think that gets quite tiresome quite quickly. Yes. Yes. And people get a bit of fatigue. But if they, you know, receive an email or message from you and it's from you, they're excited to see, you know, what's going on. Yes. Um, and you, you could make automated emails incredibly personalized. Yes. Uh, you know, you're writing them with, you know, hey, you know, I've got some that are, hey, I'm just checking, like I sent a really great one um, when COVID was happening. And I was like, hey, I'm just checking in. I just want to see how you're doing. Uh, you know, it's really shit at the moment. Here are some resources of, you know, some people or, mm. you know, places you can talk to about hotlines or health or mental health or whatever. I'm here as well. Um, and I got about 30 or 40 people reply back to me and just go, thank you so much. Yeah. Every other company was sending out a, this is our policy and this is what's going on and whatever. And you were just a, a familiar name and face yes. that come into our inbox at the time that we needed it. Yes. Um, it went to 200 people, but I wrote it with the intention of it was going to that one intended Absolutely. person. And from I think a place of empathy right. rather than from a transaction, Absolutely. a business transaction. Yep. I, I really love that. I love that. Um, and I guess probably one thing that people are going to know is um, is how how can people grow their database? And I want you to talk about authentic. I don't want you to talk about lead yep. magnets and some of that because that, yep. that's all the other crap uh -huh. that people are doing that are inauthentic. There's nothing wrong with having lead <laughs> magnets, but again, the, the you know, again, the, the whole point is to uh, be sure that people will resonate with you and align with you, not, uh, you know, I teach, used yeah. to teach neuro-linguistic programmers, you know, so I know that there are ways yeah. that you can positively um, and subconsciously get people to interact with you, but always from a, an a authentic perspective, also from a, uh, an ethical perspective. So how, how can people do yeah. that ethically? Yes, I love that you said that. Um, so wherever you are in the world, um, I'll just use Australia as an example, because that's where we're sitting. Um, so in Australia, there's a, a board called the ACMA and they are the anti-spamming body. Um, so they're, uh, and you know, if you're in the UK, you're governed by the GDPR. So wherever you are, um, I really suggest that you look into who, what the laws are around marketing communication and what is classed as a solicited or unsolicited piece of communication. Um, so what we need to do is we need to make sure that the customer's information and data we have has been given to us um, and they approve of being contacted. So, you know, quite often you might have a checkbox. So one of the best places to have a sign up is to opt into your newsletter on your website. Perfect. And you just have a little checkbox saying, 
you know, I'm agreeing to be um, communicated with for the intention of marketing purposes. And then I think the next best thing is making sure that the mail client that you're using, so the vehicle or the platform that you're sending it out, because you need to use one. You can't just BCC everyone in Outlook or Gmail because then you're not allowing people to update their preferences or to opt out. And there has to be a very clear uh, way for people to opt out. So you might do a competition. Competition is a great way. So rather doing an Instagram competition about, hey, like and tag, you know, five friends, what you might do is you might pop a website form and you might say, hey, you know, head over to my website or use this short link and pop your details in and then we'll pick a winner from there. So you want to trans- you want to convert those people from social interactors to database and customers. Um, if you are an e-commerce store, so maybe you've got an online shop, uh, you know, when people purchase, you put that little checkbox. Um, so you're getting people from there. If you are at a market um, on a Saturday morning, you still might have the old school pen and paper because people are waiting. Maybe you are serving another customer. So you'd like something for them to do while they're waiting. Or if you're a little high tech, you can have a QR code that people can scan that brings the form up. They pop their details in. So there are a number of different ways you can do it, but I, I think they're some of the most effective um, and efficient ways too. Absolutely. And given the fact that, um, you know, we, we don't want to be controversial here about anything, not on this topic, maybe another <laughs> one, but <laughs> we know that, um, you know, there have been times where social media platforms have been down and people go, oh, how can I interact with my, my customers? So they really have put all their eggs in one basket and they don't have a database of any sort. They just relying on, you know, the major, I guess, social media platforms. Is that probably another reason why? Yeah. 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 Um, This is probably controversial because I run a digital marketing agency and the minute that any social media is down, I for a minute freak out, but then I get excited (laughs) because I know everyone is glued to their phones waiting for something to come out. And that's when I'll go and send a campaign out. So I'll go because I know like there's no other Mm -hmm. way because, you know, and I've got a pretty good database and my clients have great databases. So I'll, I'll say, hey, let's seize this opportunity Let's send something out right now. And our open rates are always higher. Um, Our click-throughs are always higher. And we use SMS as well because, again, uh, people are just so glued to devices these days. So, And I think there's your point as well. A reminder is that we are just there using these social media platforms. Mm -hmm. Uh, Whilst they're free, we're at their kind of beck and call as to what we can and can't do. And... The good thing about having your own customer database is is that you have a direct connection and route to communicate at any time and aren't being held hostage to a power outage or a hack or whatever. So I think that's the key here. Absolutely. And I love that. And I know that um, I'm not on a lot of social media very often anymore. I've really cut back on that because I'm focused on recording. But I know that the last time it went down, uh, I sent you a message and, and you said, yeah, we're just sending out to our database. And I thought, wow, you know, so solution focused, you know, that's, that's why I love being a part of your a part of your uh, company, because it's just for me, you know, rather than people panicking and going into drama mode, it's more about, oh, hang on a minute, let's do this now. But then the aim is to make sure that we teach everyone to start collecting and gathering their own data. So, yeah. There's a little bit of, I told you so. Like, yeah, pretty I, much, I, yeah. We love to do that. Um, <laughs> I'm not even a Virgo, but I still do it. <laughs> um, Chrissy, how often should should we email and communicate with people? What do you think? Uh, I don't think there's, yeah, I don't think there's one size fits all for that. Sure. Um, I think it really depends on uh, the size of your database. So as you grow, you may send out more frequently. Uh, the last thing you want to do is um, barrage people and, you know, send out communication that isn't relevant or annoy them. I think once a month is pretty good. Um, if you're uh, getting into the swing of things, uh, fortnightly or sometimes. So generally, I just sent one today for myself. So for me, I probably send two a month. Uh, but if something comes up that's like a new piece of technology, there's some tips or I'm doing something, then I may send something else out. But I think the key here is segmenting your database. So whenever I send a campaign out, I have different categories of people. So 
if I'm going back to South Australia, when we're going home to see our family, I might do a training or a session. I only send that communication out to these people in a different category because they're not really going to care about or want to know about what I'm doing in Sydney. So my biggest recommendation is really make sure that the, the quality of the people you have is that you're separating them for separate things because the last thing you want to do is send something out that's not relevant to them. Uh, this occasion, they'll opt out and then you've lost them forever. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Now, that makes a lot of sense. And is that what you're suggesting? So that's basically setting up different um, um, like databases for different particular topic areas that people are interested in. Now, that's a bit different to A-B testing or split testing or whatever. Is that that's yeah. a bit different? Yeah. So, so tell yeah. us a bit so, about that. Yeah, sure. So just to circle back a little. So when you're setting those people up, uh, quite often it'll just ask them what kind of tags or categories you want to put them in. Yes. And then, yeah, you just pop them in and then you can search by them. But I, I love A-B testing. So you've got your database, you've created a campaign that you're going to send out and maybe you're stuck with the subject line and you really don't know, you know, you're umming and ahhing between one or two different subject lines. So what you can do is pretty much every platform has this. So uh, you pop in one subject line, which is your A, then you might do uh, the second subject line, which is your B, but you might put an emoji in this time. And what happens is the data, the system will send, uh, say, 20% um, to with subject A's line and then 20% with subject B's line. It waits to see which one gets the better open rate. And then depending on that small data that comes back, then the other 60% will go to um, people with the subject line that performed best. Wow, I love that. I've not, uh, I've not, I've not, I've not tested that. We'll have to talk about it's that amazing. once we're finished. <laughs> but yeah, it's but so I, good. I, I really, I, I love that. I do, I do love that. Um, yeah, that's that's fantastic. And again, you know, like my my um, my previous previous background, which was teaching communication sales and you know copy and stuff like that which is sort of not an area that i'm sort of that much involved in anymore but it's always i, I love it it's fascinating when um i i can observe from a basically from a holistic and behavioral psychology aspect why certain things are better i mean obviously the large percentage of the population are visual so that's why that's right. all of this stuff um you know it's just it's fascinating so yeah i love that i, I really want to learn more about that so um yeah now, an area that um, you and I are very much passionate about, but uh, so I'll give, I'll let you share why it's important to personalise email content, and then I can share from a behavioural psychology okay. perspective. <laughs> so, so yeah, sure. let us know why, because we we all know that if you're using email automation, there are those different ways that you can. Yep. Yeah, great, thank you. You probably taught me, so we might have the same thing. <laughs> uh, so, um, so personalisation is great, um, but only if it's executed properly. So, you know, if you, so, hey, you know, hey, Chrissy, or there's an exciting, like, subject line might be, uh, Chrissy, an exciting offer for you, You're like, click here. So a little bit click baby. And I'm like, oh, cool, because we always resonate better when we hear our own name spoken and we see it like it's so natural to us, right? So, you know, that, that's fantastic at first. And then you might say, hey, Chrissy, um, this is what's happening and this is what's going on. Sometimes people, when they're setting up their database categories though, they might not split first name and last name. And loads of, loads of people I've spoken to get really shitty about it because you've gone, to the, you've gone to the hassle and trouble of wanting to collect my data and send me something. But if you send me an email that says, hi, Chrissy Simonakis, I'm like, oh, you, like, you haven't quite executed yes. that. Um, you quite better just to say nothing. Um, but the thing for me is it immediately helps you connect with that person and build a rapport. Sure. Um, but I, so that I think that's important from where I sit. I think using personalization too much um, can be a little overbearing. And it's like when you're getting told off by a parent and they keep using your name, like I think people yes. regret to that yes. a little. Yes. And then I think with personalization too, there, I think it's three three personalizations in an email we found to be enough. Yes. And one thing that people don't want you to do, and it's women over 50, mm. hate it when you talk about how old they are. Mm. 
Oh, I don't mind. Yeah. The, meso- the menopause occasionally sort of. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, That's isn't that sad. interesting? But again, if, you, if you're aware of that, if you're aware that a large portion of your market don't like it, well, then don't do it. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. Interesting, yeah. And it's a bit lazy if, if you if you already know that and you're just you keeping it easy so you just send the same thing out to everyone. So, right. um, so yeah, so... And, and, I, and, I, and I mean, I agree with you. That's something that I you know, taught 20 years ago and, and it was really in my face when I went to Bali. And I talk about it in one of my YouTubes is that um, someone saying your name is um the the time when you are the center of attention and at a subconscious level uh, irrespective whether you're an introvert or extrovert people like it and uh you know the story i share in brief is when i was in bali and a lady came up and she was trying to sell me some things and she had a hat on and she pointed to her hat and she said my name is i can't remember what it was right now um, and I, she said, what is yours? And I said, Trudy. And she, and she kept saying her name and repeating my name and her name and my name. Well, anyway, I ended up buying stuff from her on the spot. But then a little bit later, I was walking down and other people were yelling out Trudy. And I was thinking, geez, there's a lot of Trudys in, on Bali Beach. But it was me <laughs> because she had spread my name out. And all of a sudden, and... Um, I remember thinking that day, <laughs> someone has been teaching NLP on this Bali beach because they were far better. And I mean, I was buying stuff that I didn't even need. And it was because they they had been, obviously, they were connecting the name with, you know, the person. And uh, so, yeah, it's very personalised. But I, I love the fact that you've just explained also that, you know, people can feel like you're over using, uh, using something. Yeah. I mean, it's a bit like I'm talking to you if I meet you you know, at shopping, I'm not going to be saying, hey, Chrissy, what about this? Hey, Chrissy, what, you know, again, so natural communication is obviously, obviously far more effective. So, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Now, emojis, oh, please tell me. I, I do use emojis when I write my posts, more personally, because I probably use uh-huh. a lot of emojis that, you know, probably shouldn't be using. But anyway, but so the, <laughs> why, why do you suggest using emojis? Um, so if anyone doesn't know, um, I met somebody the other day um, and we we use a platform called Emojipedia. Uh, it's amazing. So if you're doing anything from a desktop, like it's fantastic. Oh, and it that. even yes. it gives you like the trending uh, emojis, like Thanksgiving comes up. It'll put a turkey and it gives you suggestions. Oh, yep. uh, tells you what's trending, all of that. So I live in there and someone the other day didn't know about it. I'm like, what do you mean you don't? Like, how do you <laughs> not give an emoji? Every single post that does has yeah. to have. Uh, I think you touched on it before, Trudy. It's very much in that um, we resonate and we are such visual people. Mm -hmm. And I think when we're incessantly uh, busy now, we just want to make that connection between, uh, you know, what is this? What is it telling me? What do I need to know? Uh, And I think, you know, you probably know a little bit more about this than I do. But, uh, you know, as kids, our first memories of, you know, books or what we're finding out is imagery. So emojis are just an extension of that. So we can communicate, you know, quite quickly what it is, what we need to know about it. And it's a really great way to be a little bit cheeky, you know, have have a little bit of banter. And I love, I actually got an email a couple of days ago and it was, you know, my whole inbox was just text, boring, monotonous. And then somebody sent me something and it was all love hearts. Wow. And I was like, wow, this is amazing. You've brightened my day. I'm going to click there because it's, you know, sh- bright, shiny um, pictures. And, yeah, it's breaking It's breaking that state as well. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I agree with you. It's, um, it, it's, a, it's a quick, it's a summary. And I guess that's what we can do. People can get it. You can get emotions from reading words, but we're living in an environment where uh, a large portion of people are not... Um, I, I do not have the capacity to read through something long. That's why when I see some of these long sales pages, and I'm like, oh, geez, I've, I've, I've turned off. It's too much. Whereas yeah. if you break things up with visual images, and I, I guess that that's, um, yeah, that the other thing is that if we look at where we came from, whether we believe it or not, you know, there was potentially cavemen, <laughs> and 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 even and even uh, our other cultures, our cultures, our ancestors. They were drawing little symbols, and so symbols is really just another form of an emoji. It is a really quick way to summarise things. So yeah, but so you're gonna, you've been, yep, you've inspired me to use more emojis, um, positive yep. emojis, and so yeah, I'll, I'll so, definitely. So awesome is a bullet point. Yes. So where you might ordinarily put a bullet point, just using an emoji. So like, you know, if you're in the travel industry and you're talking about a getaway to Queensland. 
You might use a palm tree. Then you might use a cocktail glass. You might use sand. Like so, essentially, you're then I planting because you're painting a picture. Yeah. You're painting a That's picture, right. aren't you? You're basically you're painting a picture, and um, so yeah, yeah, I love that. I love that. Wait until you see my posts coming up soon. I'm going to emoji it out. <laughs> <laughs> Um, as overkill, such thing as overkill. I have to keep myself in check. Um, what were what some tips, Chrissy, that you have? I know, and thank you. I know that um, you know you're busy with so many things that you're doing. But just if we could just sort of wrap up, what are some tips for people um, that don't have an email list and and so and they want to get yep. started? What is something you can suggest? Yeah. Uh, start today. Like, there's no time like the present. Um, even if you don't, and and I dare say you've probably got some data kicking around that hasn't even surfaced or been put on your radar. Hmm. Like if you have an online store, if you ever done a training uh, or an event, you've got that sales or ticket data, so that can be utilized. If you, you know, go and pop up that contact or a contact form with a check-in uh, on your website and yeah, just start collecting. You don't necessarily need to send something out straight away, but it's so much easier to be building that database every day so that when you do have something to say or you're ready or maybe a platform has gone down, um, you're ready to rock. Yeah, you can never have enough data. Yeah. And you have to factor in those people that are going to opt out, their email addresses are going to be defunct because they no longer work at a company or an organisation. So you should have, um, you know, this is a little bit big picture, but you should also have a strategy on how you can top up how you can just keep building. Like, I think I started with, you know, five or 10, I've got over 100,000 now. And that's just because I lose a couple of people each time. If I've lost a few, I'll do a competition. So I'm just looking at ways to retop it up. Yeah, I love that. And I think the other thing is too, is that people, I guess, also need to remember that uh, a lady asked me this uh, a while ago and she said, oh, yeah, I need more people on my database. And I said, do you even communicate and connect and love the people you already have? Because from someone that's taught customer service and sales for like 20 years, I say, you, yeah. are you loving the people you have or are you just trying to get someone? And I think that that's what I'm finding lately, um, you know, particularly in social media, people are trying to grab people. And I'm saying, but but they, they may not be your ideal client. You know, start, start yeah. being selective and start giving being of service to people that need your uh, need uh, a solution to their problem, not just grabbing and saying, I've got a million people in my database, but how many are actually re interested in what you're doing and how many do you really care that's about? Right. I think that genuine care about your, you know, about people, I think that that's something that I admire that um, that creative little soul and that you have actually instilled in your company. So I really appreciate mm -hmm. that. So. Well, yeah. thank you so much. And um, if you're, it's okay with you, we might just even chuck your link um, down below uh, this video. And I know that um, you're brilliant with your coaching uh, because I've been a part of it. <laughs> so. I learned from the master. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not. I'll take that. <laughs> Send me an emoji when we finish. <laughs> but um, no, thank you. But so yeah, so if people can, you know, if you're happy for people to reach out, because I do know that yeah, you're, very, you're very quick thinker. You're very good at coming up with um, a solution that might take people months or years. And, you know, for me, as I said, I, I prefer to learn quickly from the experts and then execute okay. um, and you give people actionable steps. So, yeah. So, so thanks again. Uh, thanks anything you want to finish on? Is that anything else? Um, just, I think as well, um, there's plenty of free resources on our website. So by all means, there's lots of free information. Um, we just want to help and educate. And if you have ideas as well, please let us know. Um, but also subscribe to other people's newsletters. Um, maybe even go and set up a different email address, like a Google, uh, like a Gmail, and you keep it separate to your normal inbox and maybe start subscribing to people's lists who are in a similar industry or field that you're in or you're aspiring to get in and start looking at their emails and their automation and see what they do well or what offers they're partnering and sending out because it's going to help you, like Trudy said, get to that fast track. So don't reinvent the wheel look at what others do really well and don't do, and then just craft your communication around that. 
Yeah, I love that. And that's typical market research. A lot of people are a bit like we're starting to do, we're going to be a runner one day and now we want to be sprinting in the Olympics and they forget that sometimes <laughs> the market research is actually getting right. you to that step. So, well, thanks again very mm -hmm. much, Chrissy. I really appreciate it. And I'm sure we're going to talk to you. I'm going to, I've got it written a list here of things that I know that you're an expert <laughs> in. And so um, we'll look forward to chatting again on another topic soon. But yeah, thank you once again very much. Really thanks, appreciate Chrissy. it. Bye, thank everyone. You. Bye, everyone.